back, relax and maybe get yourself a snack Me and you gonna have a little chat about books Hey guys, so I'm here today to do two book reviews of two very interesting books So the first one is A Tale for the Time Being which is by Ruth Ozeki the second one is The Garden of Evening Mists, which is by Tan Tuang Eng. And both of these are written by authors from different cultures, and they're definitely interesting. This book is set in Malaya. We follow a young woman who is called Yunling Tao, and Yunling is our main character throughout the entire book. She is the lone survivor of a Japanese war camp, and she has carried these scars with her since she was very, very young of this war camp and the time she spent there, because it was absolutely horrific um, but she has actually studied law at Cambridge and she is a well-educated young woman and she has a lot of merit to her as well as being a sufferer and a survivor of this war camp. After her time studying law she decides that she wants to go and seek refuge in northern Malaya where she grew up as a child and so she goes and she discovers a young man called Yogiri who is living out there and he happens to have been the Japanese emperor's gardener which is where the gardens come into this. Seeing as she was in a Japanese war camp, she is incredibly wary of the Japanese people. She does not like them on instinct. She cannot help but to dislike him straight away. But when he starts to talk to her, and when she discusses with him the possibility of him helping her to design her own garden, they do become friends. And you follow her throughout her present day storyline and the past storyline, where you see her as an older woman recounting the life that she built with Yugiri and with other people in the community and why she did that and how she kind of got to that point. So we see all of her past up from when she was taken away to the camp and even before through to when she is trying to recover and she meets Yugiri up to when she then becomes a very very qualified lawyer and becomes an older woman and retires and goes back to the same place that she used to live. So we follow her whole entire life and I think as a narrator, as a voice, she was fantastic. She came across really really well and she just sounded like someone who you could connect to and you could enjoy and I think that really really helped bring this book to life for me. The other thing that really helped is the fact that Tan Tuang Eng's writing is fantastic and the way that the gardens, particularly in this storyline, are described are beautiful, evocative, you can visualise them, they are so present in your mind when you are being described these places that I just, I fell in love with it, I could not help but to really, really enjoy visualising the places and I think it's quite a slow moving story, it's quite peaceful, um, it does deal with some nasty things, like I say the concentration type camps and stuff like that, but it is a very beautiful story and it has this kind of peaceful lull to it throughout and there's never really an action packed moment, it's quite l peaceful, quite steady, but I think there is such a beautiful sense of calm and tranquility that you get from reading this because this description of these gardens that they created together, the descriptions of their lives intertwining, it is very beautiful and I really really like that. So I think go into this knowing it's going to be a slower read and you'll probably really enjoy it because that's exactly what I did. I would definitely recommend this, I think as I say it's a beautiful book and it's something that I wouldn't normally read but really really did enjoy reading. I read it as part of Diversathon which was a fantastic experience overall for me because I read so many great books and this was one of them. And I just would recommend this to a lot of you, so if you've not heard of it, it kind of bridges on magical realism, kind of, because there are magical-esque elements to it. Um, it's more of a fiction book than magical realism, but it definitely has moments that feel very magical. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars overall and would love to hear your thoughts on it if you have read it. I believe that Tan Tuang Eng has another book out, so I'm going to try and pick that one up sometime soon so that I can read that too, because this one was just absolutely beautiful. So definitely one I'd recommend. The second book that I have to show you guys is this one which is A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki and again I'd never read this before but I was recommended it by Mercedes and it definitely is a really really good book. Um, I think I like this one slightly more because it feels a little bit more like there's more going on but again it has that quite peaceful kind of slower moving plotline that I expect from general fiction or magical realism more than I expect from fantasy. Um, I think it's quite tranquil, it's quite peaceful, and then there are times where it's like boom boom boom, this is horrible, this is shocking, this is nasty. 
So this one has a bit more of an up and down kind of thing, a staccato kind of up and down, and I really really liked this storyline. We follow two different characters in this. The first one lives in Tokyo and her name is Nao, and she is a young girl who has grown up in America but has had to move back to Tokyo and Japan. She doesn't really feel like she fits in there because her family moved away when she was young and she's grown up in America and it feels like her life is there. And so she tries to kind of keep in contact with her, some of her American friends. She feels like she doesn't fit in with the Japanese girls in her new school. And she's being bullied and she's being very hatefully bullied. It's not like a light bullying, a teasing. It's, it's a lot more. It's quite intense. It definitely gets intense later on when they do quite nasty, horrible things. And now the whole time she's there is keeping this diary, kind of telling her life story and what's been going on with her. She's quite an interesting, quite thoughtful person. She thinks quite deeply about the things around her and about what's happening to her and why it might be happening. She knows her own faults quite well and she's very good at seeing other people's, but she also has a very big weight on her shoulders. Not only is she being bullied and she's living this lifestyle that she doesn't enjoy and she doesn't feel like she fits in, she knows that her father is suicidal, that's quite a heavy burden on her, and her mother is constantly trying to make up the money that her father would normally have put in as well, and so her mother's entirely stressed out all the time. So the only person that she really has in her life who is there for her is her grandmother, and her grandmother is a nun who lives up in a monastery um, quite a way away, but occasionally now goes and stays with her, and they form this bond and this friendship over the time that they do, and that's what she recounts in this diary, as well as the horrible things. She also has this lovely relationship with her grandmother, and I think it's beautiful to see that. So that was her storyline. The other storyline is a present day one. Um, in this storyline, it's completely across the Pacific. It's set on an island, and we follow a young woman named Ruth, who finds Nao's diary after this big tsunami has hit in Japan, and she believes maybe it's completely floated all the way over to the other side of the Pacific, and she finds the diary and she begins to read about Nao's journey and her life and everything horrible that's happened to her, and weird things kind of start to happen that link the two storylines, and it definitely has magical realism elements to it, it has some very interesting crossover between the two stories, and how they interlink is quite cool. Um, I really liked Now's storyline, I think Now's storyline was way more interesting to me than Ruth's storyline, but they came together in a way that I found fascinating and I think that they work really really well as a collective book because you can see Ruth's reactions to what was happening with Now, but you know that Now's storyline happened in the past, we don't know if Now is alive, if she's dead, if anything happened to her, it's you don't know until you get to the end of the book, and so I really, really, really enjoyed it, and I think it's a fantastic read, and one again that I would recommend. It does have some beautiful places with writing. I think it's not necessarily an easy read, but it's definitely an entertaining read, and it will be one where you'll connect with the characters I expect. So I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars, and I would love to hear your thoughts if you guys have read this. I believe, again, that Ruth Ozeki does have other books out, so I will hopefully be picking up some of her other work in the future but this is the one I've always heard people talk about, so if you have any other recommendations of her other books, do let me know which ones to pick up and start. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in my next video very soon. Bye! Thank you for watching my video today. Go pick up a book, then come back and chat with me again.